Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Today we are going to discuss the position vector. What is the position vector? So position vector is one of the important thing in engineering statics that we must know how to find the position vector and what the position vector is. So the position vector is a vector which tells us the position of an object or we can say the position of a point relative to another point. So let's say in this figure, if you want to find the position of point A with respect to O, then we will say that we have to find a position vector for this point A, this point A relative to O. So the position vector will be a vector which will start from O and which will end on point A. So let's say that this is our position vector which starts from O, which ends on point A, since we want to find the position of point A relative to point O. So we say that the R A relative to O, this is the position vector for point A relative to O. So there are um, two different methods to find the position vector. So the easiest method which I use in all of my videos is that we always start from point O and we move, we move in the X, Y and Z direction to reach that point O. So that's the easy way. So from O, when we start, so to reach that point A from O, we need to travel 160 mm distance, this much distance in the uh, positive Y direction, this is our positive Y direction. So we can say that in the positive j direction, we have to move 160 mm. Or in other words, we have to move 0 0.16 meter distance in the positive y. So I will write that we have to move 160 mm in the positive j. So once we move 160 mm now distance in the positive j or in the positive y, we will reach this particular point. And once we reach this particular point, then we have to travel 90 mm distance in the in the negative x direction. This is the positive x, so we have to move 90 mm distance in the negative x, that is in the negative y. So we will say that this will be minus 90 i. And since we have reached that point A, when we move in the positive j and in the negative y, so there is so there is no need to move in the z direction. So this means that the z coordinate of the or we can say that the z component of the position vector of A relative to O is zero. So we can say that that will be zero k. So this is the position vector of A relative to O. So this tells us the position of point A relative to point O. So this means that point A is 90 mm away from point O in the negative x direction. So if we look from this point to the point A, if we look to the this diagram from this direction, then point A is at a distance of 90 mm in the negative x. So this means that the, the distance between point O and A along the x is 90 mm. And that's uh, point A is in the negative x direction. Similarly, this tells us that the distance between point A and point O along the y-axis is 160 mm. And this tells us that point A and point O, they are in the x-y plane. There is, this means that the distance between point O and A along the z-axis is zero. So this is how we can find the position. This is the first method how we can find the position vector of A relative to O. Then the second method, um, which, I, I, I do not use in my videos, but some people use that to find the position vector of A relative to O is by finding, by writing the coordinates of point A and writing the coordinates of the point O. Or we can say that writing the coordinates of both the points from where we are going to find the position vector. Let's say, again, if you want to find the, the position vector of A relative to O, so we will write the coordinates of point A from the origin. So we can write the coordinates of point A from point O. So point A is 90 mm in the negative x and 160 mm in the positive y. And the z coordinate is zero. So we can say that the coordinates of point A is minus 90, 160, and zero. 
And for the origin, we know that origin is always at 0, 0, and 0. So now to find the position vector of A, the relative to O, we will subtract the coordinates of A, the, the coordinates of O from A. Since we want to find the position vector of A relative to O, so you guys have to subtract the coordinates of point O from the coordinates of point A. So we will write minus 90 minus 0. This is the x coordinate. So we will write i and we will write plus 160 minus 0 into j and plus 0 minus 0 into k. So this is equal to minus 90 i plus 160 j plus zero k. So this is how we can find the position vector by finding, by writing the coordinates of both the points. Now let's say if you want to find position vector of A relative to E. Let's say if you want to find the position vector of, the position vector for point A relative to E by using the second method. We will use both the methods to find the position vector of A relative to E. So now we know the coordinates of point A, we have to find, we have to write the coordinates of point E relative to O. So the, the coordinates of point E are, so from point O, point E is 120 mm in the positive x. So you write plus 120. And since this point E is in the x z plane, so the y coordinate will be zero. There is no need to travel this point E is lying on the floor, so there is no need to travel in the y direction. Are there the point E is lying on the floor, so the y coordinate is zero. So we can say this is zero. And the z coordinate of point E is 120 mm since this point E is at a distance of 120 mm from that point O in the z direction. So we will say 120. So these are the coordinates of point E in mm, and these are the coordinates of point A in mm, and we want to find the position vector of A relative to E. So again, we have to subtract the coordinates of point E from A. So you write minus 90 minus that 120. And since these are the x coordinate, we will write it with the unit vector i, then plus oh, this 160 minus 0 in j and then for the z coordinate we will write 0 minus 120 so this gives us uh, 120 minus 19 to minus 120 it gives us minus 210 i plus 160j minus 120. So this is uh, using the using this method we have determined the position vector of A relative to E. Now the second method which which I use in my videos is I'll, I always start from point E and start motion in the x, y and z direction to reach that point A from that point E and then I find the position vector of A relative to E. So now we can say that Without writing the coordinates of point A and E, I just start from point E. I just start traveling from point E in the x, y, and z direction and try to reach that point A from E, since the position vector always serves as the position of point A relative to E. So now using that method, if we start from point E, we need to travel this distance, which is 120 mm. And this distance is in the negative z. As you guys can see from E, we are moving in the negative z. So we will write that first we have traveled 120 mm in the negative k direction. So when we have traveled 120 mm in the negative z, we have reached this point D. So once I reach this point D, then I have to move this distance in the negative x. Since this is the positive x, I have to travel this distance in the negative x, which is 120 mm. So in the negative x, we need to travel 120 mm. So I will write minus 120. 
So by traveling 120 mm in the negative K or in the negative Z and 120 mm in the negative X, we, we have reached this point O. So then again, from point O, we need to travel this distance in the positive Y. This 160 mm distance in the positive Y. So I will write plus 160, the positive Y is J, plus J, right? So we have reached this particular. Now from this point, we need to travel this distance, 90 mm in the negative X again. So I will write minus 90 I. So now as you guys can see, we have two terms with the unit vector I. So we have to get it back, right? So this will be minus 120 minus 90 is minus 210 i plus 160j and minus 120k so as you guys can see we got the same position vector as of this one is minus 210i plus 160j minus 120k and remember that the units are in mm the position vector units are always in, in in the units of meters or feet or centimeters since this these are this is always the position vector always tells us the location so the location is always in the units of distance and remember that if you find the magnitude of the position vector so the magnitude of the position vector always tells us the direct distance between the two points in this particular case if you want to find the position vector of a relative to e so if we find the magnitude of this position vector, that will tell us, that magnitude will tell us the direct distance between point A and E. So how to find the magnitude, we can always use the Pythagoras theorem. So we can say that uh, the magnitude of the position vector from A to E, that will be equal to by taking the squares of all the components and then taking the square root. Always use the Pythagoras theorem. So this would be 210 squared plus 160 squared plus 120 squared. So this will give us the magnitude. So this gives us 290 mm. So the magnitude is 290 mm. So this means that the, distance, the direct distance between point A and E this distance is 290 mm. So this is how we can find the position vector and the magnitude of the position vector always tells us the direct distance between the points which we intend to find for the position vector for which we, we, we are interested to find relative to another point.